good afternoon to everyone so i welcome all you all of you for the second session of the international virtual conference on materials and application so the second session first talk will be given by dr g swaraman he did his um, bachelor's in tyaraja college madurai and he completed his masters in the american college madurai after completing his master he joined professor dr d chellappa in madurai kamaraj university as a uh, research scholar and completed his phd in 2014 his area of research is chemical biology and computational chemistry after completing his phd he joined his first postdoc from 2014 to 18 in ncbs bangalore in some in some cell biology under the mentorship of akash gulyani um he got he, uh, his awards were he got npdf by from dsc so and also best institute postdoctoral fellowship from ncbs he has a total number of publications of 63 and a cumulative impact factor of 237 with h index of 30 and also citation of 2500 currently one of his patent in uh, has been uh, approved and he is currently working in gandhigram rural university deemed it to be university so now now i request uh, dr uh, sivaraman to present his research work uh, sivaraman sir now the yeah yeah i will continue yeah thank you uh, good afternoon to everyone thanks dr sinkaram for that kind introduction okay today i am going to give a short presentation on that topic entitled mitochondria at quest for chemist okay we are all know that that every animals has that made up of of cells okay each cell is having each cells it's having the each cells it consisting that mitochondria that mitochondria it's the mitochondria is the power center of the cell okay why that my mitochondria it's called it as the power center of the cell we all know that that cell is the dynamic entity okay that mitochondria is the membrane bound cell organelle okay it generates most of the chemical energy okay which is needed to which is needed to for the cell to carry out any biochemical reactions or biochemical works okay so we can call it as a cell Power center or power house of the cell. That energy which is created, that energy which is created inside the mitochondria, which is stored as a one molecule. Okay, that molecule is termed as adenosine triphosphate. Okay, ATP is it's also termed as the energy currency of the cell. Okay, it is that structure of that mitochondria. That structure of the mitochondria, it's that outer membrane is there and the inner membrane is there. It's a bilayer. Uh, we won't say as a bilayer. It's the Uh, three membrane or uh, mem uh, three cotton membranes are surrounded by the uh, mitochondria. That's each mitochondria is surrounded by three membranes. One is outer membrane, another one is inner membrane. Uh, in between these two, that inner membrane space, some fluids will be there. Okay, that is inside that mitochondria. That mitochondrial DNA is the play. It's going to play a major roles for that every bio. chemical reactions as well as the biological processes okay next i'm moving to that why mitochondria it's termed as the power house of the cell each oxygen okay oxygen is consumed by the body it's transferred to that every cells and organism by the by means of that oxygen transport proteins okay okay uh, is it clear okay uh that uh, sugar molecule which is present in that cells it is consumed by the mitochondria 
by the usage of oxygen which is inhaled by us by by means of respiration which is converted into the atp if mitochondria triggers that death okay triggers that death means it won't that is it won't produce any atp molecules that is atp it's, it's the we already told about that atp it's the adenosine triphosphate okay adenosine triphosphate it's it's also termed as the energy currency of the cell okay that i'm here put a very small on a slide here that's various roles played by the mitochondria okay in the mitochondria that secondary messenger that calcium ion will be the secondary messenger that targets are kinases nowadays that uh, we are in the covid 19 cases here also that some kinase protein cells also playing a main role to attack that our cells that's if that covid 19 protein if it is enters to our body via that ace pathway that is acetylcholinesterase pathway then it is activating that kinases that kinases it also controlled by mitochondria okay uh, what are the uh, cellular effects of that uh, calcireinase calcireine and kinases it is activating the signaling pathways okay then atp we are all know that atp oh it is that it's a very we can say does that what are the cellular effects it's related to that mitochondria and atp it's that energy center from that energy center it's the rnla tracking okay then ros ros means it's the reactive oxygen species reactive oxygen species means we can term it as several redox sensitive enzymes as well as that um, sulfur containing amino acids as well as that proteins sulfur containing amino acids means we can specifically tell about that glutathione as well as that cysteine okay uh, which are which are the two main things for that remodeling of chromatin okay remodeling of chromatin chromatin okay next that target one is that acetyl transferase that acetyl transferase enzyme that in that acetyl transferase uh, target the secondary target is that acetyl coa enzyme that is acetyl coa enzyme a okay it is the deactivation of nuclear chains it is playing as a uh, playing for the uh, deactivation of nuclear chains Then finally, that is apoptosis. Apoptosis is either rapid. Uh, apoptosis is when a controlled cell death. Okay, this is a mitochondria also played a main role in the apoptosis. That's that outline of that the small presentation here, and uh, which I am going to uh, deliver here. Uh, we are going to talk about that three major uh, uh, constraints. One is um, mitochondria mass sensing. That is second one is the sensing of physical environment physical environment means there is mitochondrial potential and what a mitochondrial viscosity that is mitochondrial viscosity changes inside the mitochondria this is that mitochondrial ph changes then sensitive chemical environment we it is nothing but that ions and the molecules okay now i am moving to that mitochondrial sensing dye that is mitochondrial membrane i already told about that mitochondrial membrane it's the two membranes will be that the in between the two membranes one inner membrane fluid will be there that's that mitochondrial membrane outer membrane it's there uh, it is possessing a strong negative charge that is strong negative charge means it is the strong negative charge of minus 180 millivolts hence that uh, mitochondrial membrane is the negatively charged and it's consisting that uh, negatively charged potential one okay why that mitochondrial membrane is that it's negatively charged okay we have proton gradient that is what in the inside we already told about that inner membrane of that mitochondria okay that inner 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 membrane inner membrane of that mitochondria uh, it's the inner membrane of that mitochondria Uh, which is consist of that protons protons the proton gradient which is fast for that negative membrane potential for that mitochondria okay uh, then okay uh, e- equally that is that uh, why how we are going to target about that mitochondria using that positively charge okay uh, now okay uh that's how that uh, atanic speed we already told about that mitochondrial 
membranes are the negatively charged ones so that it it, it easily binds to that positively charged uh, molecules that is it will diffuse that uh, positively charged cationic species will diffuse towards the negatively charged membrane okay uh, via diffusion okay in addition to the positive charge that molecules should contain that lipophilic character because because it should carry it should um, cross that it should cross that phospholipid barrier phospholipid barrier which is present in the mitochondrial membrane generally triphenyl phosphonium salts as well as pyridinium salt and xanthine dyes come and uh, xanthine based dyes can be used for the mitochondrial sensing dyes Is it clear? Yeah. Is it clear? No problem, sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. No problem. You carry on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that triphenyl phosphonium salts. It is that is the phosphorus uh, atom. It's attached to that uh, four different of alkyl or aryl groups. Okay, next one is that pyridinium salts. Which we, we these two are having the positively charged groups. There is positively charged groups uh, such as triphenyl phosphonium phosphonium salts as well as the pyridinium salts, which are attached towards that fluorophore, external fluorophore. Okay. external fluorophore uh, it can be these type of compounds can be used to, to track that mitochondria okay uh, it is called it as termed as the fluorophore which are attached towards that targeting fluorophores attached with that targeting groups that another one kind of fluorophore uh, mitochondrial tracking dyes are that that is having the fluorophores itself having the positive charge for example that's the very famous example for these two that second category is that Rhodamine one two three and the JC one. That JC one is the very famous dye for calculating or monitoring the mitochondrial membrane potential. Then, okay, rhodamine one two three is the mitochondrial tracker. Okay, that some of the I given the name for that some of the commercially available mitochondrial uh, dyes. Okay, one is tetramethyl rosamine. We are termed as TMRE on another is the mito tracker. And the mito red and the mito socks. These are the commercially available dyes. Next, uh, that uh, molecules of which we are interested. Okay, uh, we we want to use. We want to. Now that slide is moved or not? Is it the slide is moved? Yes, sir. How about? Is it? Okay, sir. Okay. Which are the that molecules? Uh, here we chosen that merosine moiety. Here that uh, by naphthal. That's naphthal ring, which is having that uh, indolium group. That is term it as the. Uh, Merosine, that is pyrimidine based dyes. We chose and that donor acceptor mechanism. Okay, here we chose uh, we chose that n-dimethyl amino group. Different substitution in the n-dimethyl amino group, as well as in the different substitution of the donor atom. If we change that donor atom, how that mitochondrial uh, sensing mitochondrial membrane tracking properties how it's going to differ? It is we can call it as the palette of dyes. Okay, palette of dyes. In addition to that, we introduce that extra CC bond in the HC2 case. Then, after synthesizing that all the molecules, that uh, set of molecules, here I given that five, but we synthesize several molecules. Uh, after synthesized to that, after after carrying out that uh, and uh, spectroanalytical characterizations, uh, we next move to that uh, fluor uh, UV visible as well as fluorescent spectroscope. Okay, here. 
uh, HC2, that HC2 is the inner dimethyl cinnamaldehyde derived compound which is showing that efflorescence emission around 700 nanometer. Okay, for uh, that triphenylamine substituted one, that triphenylamine derived molecule which is, which is uh, showing the which is giving that fluorescence around a uh, broad fluorescence around 645 nanometer. Uh, then HC1, that's NL dimethyl amino benzaldehyde derived one. It's giving that fluorescence around 610 nanometer. Both three compounds are working in the near IR region. We, I, I'm not sure, I'm not, uh, I won't say that uh, HC1 is not the perfect uh, near IR emitting material, but it is in that full range. That rest of the molecules, that C4 and C5 and C6, okay, which is giving the fluorescence around 550. Generally, that uh, biologists prefer that molecules which is having that red or near IR fluorescent emitting materials because the uh, least toxic of that uh, dyes as well as the phototoxicity of the molecule would be less. Uh, moreover, that excitation can be done in the visible region. If you uh, if you done that excitation in the visible region, uh, means that uh, phototoxicity towards that cell will be increased. Then we studied that uh, studied that viscosity changes for different type of viscous containment molecules. Uh, sorry, our dyes with that. Uh, different type of uh, solvents, okay? We chosen acetone, methanol, toluene, and DMF, and ethanol, and ethylene glycol, and glycerol, and water. Interestingly, HC1 and HC, that is postmortem molecules, uh, giving that uh, increase in fluorescence, uh, whenever changing the, whenever increasing the uh, viscosity, generally, that high viscous solvent we are chosen as the glycerol. In glycerol, all the molecules, it's giving, um, high fluorescence. Uh, then, but HC2, it's not showing that uh, increase in fluorescence, whenever change, increasing that viscosity. Why? Uh, after uh, carrying out that density functional theory calculations and other observations, we came to know that that extra CC bond, that extra CC central bond is there now. That is the reason for that inactive, uh, that is the reason uh, why HC is insensitive to the microwave viscosity. Here, that uh, extra CC bond, which undergoes that cis uh, isomerization, which, which makes that molecule for insensitive towards that microwave. Then, we move towards that uh, steady state at the time resolved fluorescence uh, uh, analysis. It is clearly uh, that fluorescence uh, study, the time result of fluorescence is uh, clearly showing that whenever increasing the viscosity, that fluorescence intensity also getting increased uh, um, linearly. It can be confirmed with the Froster Hoffman equation and the log log log. That is the log of viscosity versus log of uh, log of t means that is the lifetime data plot. Uh, it is also the steady state uh, and the time result is popular for all the molecules, which is the HC1, HC2, HC3, HC4, HC5, and HC6. Apart all of the dyes, apart all of the dyes, HC3 is the good viscosity sensing dye from the table step. Now, after HC3, that HC1 is also a yeah, second one. Okay, you can see that that HC3 is showing the uh, value of 0.63 uh, and HC1. HC1 is also showing the value of 0.61. So both the dyes are the good candidates for that viscosity sensing dye. Then we move. Now I'm moving towards that full biology. Okay, uh, more over biology sheets. Then we want to study that mitochondrial my, my, uh, mitochondrial localization of that. My, that is mitochondrial. Of that dye. Okay, first we chosen that C1. That HC1 it's clearly uh, HC1 it's clearly all localization with that already commercially available mitochond mitochond tracker. That's mitochond tracker. That on the image is the mitochond tracker green. 
metal bracket type that uh, second one the red image is shown by that our molecule hc1 we are we got that parallel uh, pearson co- coefficient that correlation coefficient of 0.92 that Peer, uh, pearson correlation coefficient it's nothing but that how both the dice are matched how both the dice are we're going to go in a um, attach it towards that mitochondrial membrane okay and uh, cccp treatment that is cccp the cccp that uh, uncoupler that, uh, that the uncoupler uh, if we add that cccp to the cp it is a chemical molecule it's that uh, cyclohexanone derivative if we add that uh, cccp towards that mitochondria that uh, that's mitochondrial stain cells that mitochondria will load that dies so automatically that last fluorescence uh, will be observed uh, if that molecule will comes out from that mitochondria we observe that loss of fluorescence we never treat that ccc towards that uh, hc1 stained cells similarly similarly for for uh, we added that monosine monosine is the ion of which is used for alteration of mitochondrial ordering mitochondrial ordering it's nothing but that changing that viscosity in the inside the mitochondria okay we recorded the fluorescent intensity of the cells which is uh, stained with hc1 for different time intervals for example here uh, we are given the data for 30 0 minutes uh, then 30 minutes and 16 minutes here it's clearly showing that the um, after addition of monosine that increase in the fluorescence intensity which is absorbed so it clearly sh- showing that the hc1 can be used for image that mitochondrial ordering or mitochondrial viscosity changes inside the cells to uh, to study that viscosity changes inside the cells then next we talk about that photocytotoxicity of the cells that every dye molecule should have Should uh, should should have that uh, least from the cytotox photocytotoxic. That is photocytotoxicity. It's what we deferred from that cytotoxicity. Cytotoxicity is just adding the cells uh, and then how the so, uh, how the molecule is toxic towards the cells. But photocytotoxicity uh, is the uh, by passing some light or from that suitable wavelength, we we have to measure the. Uh, measure how the uh, cells are viable okay we compared we compared the four different three different type of dyes one is hc1 our dye another one is the tmre it's the tetramethyl rhodamine it's the tetramethyl rhodamine it's the also a very good partner uh, very good dye for the uh, mitochondrial tracking as well as it is the um, prototoxic uh, cytotoxicity it's low that earlier slides i told about that rhodamine one two three it's the green emitting dye it is uh, photosensitivity it's uh, it will uh, that uh, it will last that uh, that uh, the for uh, rhodamine one two three uh, that for up to five minutes only only that cells are uh, st- uh, the dyes are stable inside these cells but in our case our compound after that uh, five minutes our compound is much more stable much more stable inside the cells hence it is uh, useful for that long term life cell imaging long term cell life cell imaging uh, earlier i told about that all the other dyes are very least cytotoxic and it is now it is proven that they it is uh, higher photo stability with that other already available dyes next next that is that uh, here the uh, some merged images uh, some the colocalization that's mitochondrial colocalization images for that hc2 and uh, hc3 and hc5 okay apart from hc1 hc2 and hc3 3 and hc5 okay hc5 it's very uh, having a very low pearson correlation coefficient um, it is having around 0.6 it's not too bad with compared to our partners which is which one is hc1 and hc2 and hc3 and hc4 and hc6 okay um, it is having around 0.6 and the rest of the dyes are having around 
uh, with the x uh, higher value with, with the uh, maximum value of one okay that uh, that that uh, hc1 imaging that hc5 imaging is uh, clearly showing that non specific staining of hc5 dyes inside the mitochondria uh, but as why we observe this type of this type of non specific staining we came to know that we used uh, higher laser of higher uh, energy laser of 458 nanometer higher energy means lower wavelength uh, for imaging uh, of hc5 dyes inside the cell which are dangerous to the live cells next uh, uh, similar to what we did now for monazine monazine means uh, it is that mitochondrial ordering dye ordering ion of 4 uh, we did for that hc3 also interesting we uh, for hc3 okay for hc3 that hc3 means uh, triphenylamine substituted molecule we go on for up to one and a half hours that is 90 minutes even increasing that time that is even after increasing that time after the treatment of using that mitochondrial ordering it's Cumulatively, it's taking place, which is showing that increase in the fluorescence, increase in the fluorescence um, inside the mitochondria of the cells. That is up to now. It is clearly establishing that the, our molecules can be used for the um, uh, uh, imaging and the uh, mitochondrial viscosity changes as well as that, or uh, otherwise, uh, mitochondrial ordering of the cells. Uh, this is the uh, this line. Okay, this is the main part of that one. Okay, uh, here we uh, Scientifically, one day uh, we went for we went for. I just thought that I, me, and my friend thought that why we can apply these molecules to that stem cells because we are working in the stem cell area. Then we we do, we do only uh, stained our HC one with that embryonic stem cells. Okay. Uh, and we simultaneously um, we observe we observe that our dyes C one it's stained that stained that the mitochondria in the embryonic stem cells okay as well as in the early differentiation cases that LIF I put now that is leukemia inhibiting factor if we uh, put that leukemia inhibiting factor means that cells will be uh, will be as such that is that stem cells will be as such. If we withdraw that LF means it will grow into the normal cell lines. So uh, our molecule, that's HC1, can be used for that mitochondria, uh, can be used for to image mitochondria in embryonic in stem cells. This is the first report in the world to uh, stain the mitochondria in stem cells by using that very small molecule. Generally, uh, staining that mitochondria in the stem cells, it's the huge, attractive as well as that very tedious job because that in uh, stem cells, that mitochondria, it's that nascent in condition. Nascent means it's a by birth in condition. So that mitochondrial potential will be very low. Fortunately, our molecule is staying the mitochondria um, in the stem cells. Then, uh, we started that we want to study that population heterogeneity in the cells. Okay. How that mitochondrial population is going to work out for the uh, going to affect that cellular uh, works. Okay. Now, in this for the study, we chosen that two different types of dyes. One is HC1, that's our one synthesized dye, another one is the TMR. I already told, uh, told about that TMRE. It's that tetramethyl rhodamine dye. Okay, that tetramethyl rhodamine dye. It's the very good, very good um, mitochondrial viscosity sensitive dye. We compare, we treated that both the dyes. That's tetramethyl rhodamine as well as that HC1. HC1, I already told about that, it will emit in the red region. That is 16 nanometer. Tetramethyl rhodamine will emit around. Uh, in the red range, around 540 or 550 range. 
Okay, so they are merging. We merged that one. Uh, from the results, we came to know, we came to know the conclusion: ratio metric merging of uh, mitochondrial heterogeneity, that is population heterogeneity within the primary fibroblast. Uh, fibroblast. It's also we can uh, call it as the extensions um, through the multi-parametric and as well as quantitative image. That is the we ratio metric imaging we divided into the MTG channels. Okay, it is that very interesting result. Surely it will attract that so many of biologists to address that unsung problems, to unsung problems of the chemical biology. Next, it is that relative fluorescence intensity plot. That is that how C1 and DMRE is going to find. Here you can you can see that how the buffer and mindin is also yeah, mindin is also yeah, ionophore. Okay, here that local ordering from that study we came to know that that it's not only useful to study that local ordering. Okay, we can we can do that that mitochondrial heterogeneity. This will happen in intracellular or inter intracellular or intracellular. Okay. We, you can come. You can see that for uh, TMRE intensity, that overlapping parameter is within the ten. But our overlapping parameter is after twelve. That overlapping parameter for HC1, that overlapping parameter, it's for HC1, it's around twelve. So it is clearly showing that that heterogeneity is the intracellular parameter. Okay, it's the intracellular parameter. Initially, that. Biologists think that only membrane, mitochondrial membrane, potentially is going to affect. But from that study, we came to know that local ordering is based on the membrane potential as well as that viscosity changes, as well as that heterogeneity inside the mitochondria. Inside the mitochondria, it's also going to affect that. Uh, uh, also affected by the membrane potential as well as that local order. Local ordering is nothing but the uh, micro viscosity changes. Then uh, I already told about that uh, uh, probing cellular heterogeneity. Uh, it's the local ordering of mitochondria. We just proved that. We applied this one. We applied this one to that uh, pluripotent human, pluripotent stem, or somatic stem cells, or human pluripotent stem cells. Okay, you just compare. You can see that uh, how the counts are. The rest of the dice, there is the different. Type of channels we have, uh, we split it into that uh, our uh, we go we we treated our dye HC1 and uh, that some of the standard is that is tetramic rhodomy and we split the observed images into the different scales. Okay, P0 is uh, one of the region, P1 is one of the region, and then P3 is the region of interest. That the three regions are region of interest we got. Uh, it is the ratiometric images we got it. It is clearly showing that the mitochondria, that's that mitochondria, local ordering of mitochondria in pluripotent stem cells also can be achieved by the ratiometric, ratiometric parametric energy um, using these type of types. That work that I ever I presented now, uh, that work is the it's the US patent and one. US patent and is just published in chemistry in the year of 2017. And recently, we submitted two papers that uh, it's division stage one, it's in, uh, two of them in ACL's chemical biology. One is that local uh, parameter, uh, local ordering of mitochondria by using that ratio metric imaging, the pluripotent uh, cells. Then another one no, or it's that mitochondrial imaging in these stem cells uh, using these dyes. Uh, in the elaborated manner, which is also in under revision in the ACS chemical biology. Then, multi I just told about that multi parametric imaging. Uh, okay. Then, we chosen, we want to study that multi parametric imaging. That is, we want to, uh, we want to study the multi parametric imaging using that two different type of type in a single in the cells at that time. Then, you can in the chart in the chart of the right corner I gave and here that rhodamine 1 2 3 tetramethyl rhodamine and HC1 and HC2 and DEST it's the DEST and rhodamine 1 2 3 and TMRE these three are the commercially available types 
you can see rhodamine 123 can be excited at 507 and it will emit around 525 for tmre it will be excited at 550 and it will be that fluorescence will be observed at 575 for hc1 it can be excited at hc560 and that fluorescence uh, will be around <coughs> 610 nanometer hc2 it can be excited at 625 710 nanometer we chosen two dyes from that these partner one is rhodamine 123 plus c2 that c2 is the n and dimethyl cinnamaldehyde uh, attached marosine dye uh, we used these two dyes for uh, probing that micro environmental changes inside the mitochondria in living cells we came to know that we come to conclusion after that study okay simultaneous measurements of two parameters i already told about mitochondrial potential as well as mitochondrial membrane potential as well as that local ordering uh, local ordering of that uh, local local ordering of mitochondria okay local ordering of the mitochondria it's nothing but the micro viscosity changes okay we we, we are, this is the first report to simultaneous measurements of such two such parameters okay that geometric approach the geometric approach means with two different dyes with these uh, two different wavelengths we are go come over to all the all the problems all the problems uh, to study the two parameters such as membrane potential as well as the local r it is nothing it is nothing but that intensity based sensing on imaging okay and uh, that fear space flow uh, to explore that and to in the heterogeneity of that mitochondria in this side themselves here that x axis it's having that uh, 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 counts uh, uh, also of that rhodamine one two three, which is that mitochondrial potential. And then HC two can be used for the ordering of that uh, uh, mitochondria in the cells. There is the in the y axis. We are giving the phase space out. Okay. With this, uh, with this uh, study, we came to know that we can study that. That's we studied that the using these small tiny small molecules. Uh, local ordering that is micro viscosity changes in the living cells uh, in the in the mitochondria of the living cells we can study that membrane potential also using the ratio metric approach then i told about the i given that mitochondrial ph changes that is that ph changes we also study i am not going to elaborate i just given the slide okay it is a ratio metric image that is there is the ratio metric fluorescence when we are increasing the fluorescence uh, ph value increasing the ph values means from 1 to 14 that is that fluorescence that fluorescence uh, red uh, that molecule will be the very red in red fluorescence in nature initially uh, that molecule it is green fluorescent in the acidic medium as well as that uh, it is uh, red in fluorescence in the basic medium basic ph uh, it is due to that uh, proton blockage mechanism that is that oh group present in that is one molecule can be deprotonated by the base hence it is that molecule uh, it is giving that uh, very deep red fluorescence due to that internal charge structure okay i am not going to give that uh, full details of the study here then finally it is that mitochondrial atp sensor uh, we designed this one and it is published in the year of 2017 this that which that molecule it is a very simple molecule which one i synthesized in the very long back in the year of 2012 and we studied this only the little system and we it is published in the year of 2017 um, it is the rhodamine based kind initially the molecule uh, it's as as was known for nature once the addition of adenosine type of it is atp it will become very deep red in color as well as Red fluorescent uh, in which that fluorescence it's getting increased. It is nothing but the filtering of the rhodamine spiral lactam, which is facilitated by the ATP binding. Okay. Finally, I'm going to uh, conclude here um, that uh, we developed a library of small and small photostable, at least approximate mitochondrial sensing dyes. Which are capable for reporting at local order as well as that mitochondrial viscosity and membrane mitochondrial membrane potential of the mitochondria. Okay, 
interesting way that these tags can be used for the imaging of asymptomatic okay, instructions. If we, I will tell that if we make this item up here, it's our idea. We are going to work, in on, work on it, be able to that mitochondria uh, instances for the long term memory. Okay, we can end up, we can, we can address so many other like the PTSD, autism, spectrum disorders, and so many problems. We can understand how, why it is happening. Okay. It is the pain again, it's going on. Then, understanding the agile state dynamics of the both and the underlying mechanisms and the controlling the sensitivity, why that each molecule is behaving. Okay, we also did that. Computation chemistry calculations as well as the data state dynamics using the time dissolved flows in spectroscopy and the state state absorption. We came to conclude that each one is different. Uh, here it is uh, due to the lack of time, I'm not able to give that questions. Then finally, that our dice can be used to probe the cellular heterogeneity during activation of the primary cells as well as the different. Very potent stem cells populations. Whenever uh, in different stages of the very uh, potent stem cells uh, population, we are it's, um, stem cell regeneration or some stem cell segregation, we can study that how the heterogeneity is going to change using these lights. Finally, I'm, I would like to acknowledge my. PhD boss, okay, like Professor Richard Michelopo, are providing a great opportunity and a independent thinking. Uh, now he's more uh, in the world, but he's living with us. Uh, most of the Madurai Kapla University students will remain with him. Then I would like to thank uh, my co-mentor, Professor Akos Kudiani. I won't say my post doc but he's a very close friend. Hmm. Now he moved to that university uh, Hatama. Finally, in STEM and in CBS, uh, DSC served NPDF for me for support and uh, my uh, that without this guy, without this guy, and I won't enter into the pure stem cell biology. That guy is uh, that Sufi Raja. Mm, now he is in US. Uh, me and he only did that uh, whole work, whole work on that stem cell biology because my boss, that uh, post of mentor, Professor Akas Guliani, is also a chemist, but uh, he's a uh, photophysicist, uh, there is a molecular biologist. Uh, we uh, combined working on it, still we are working uh, uh, with our collaborations. Then my junior, and the other landmates. Then research collaborators. Here I would like to thank that all of the guys from Dr. Singaram, uh, Niranjan, um, he's in Arla and Balaji and Om Prakash. Om Prakash is, uh, I can say it's our student. And the other guys, the Sobi and Sujanana um, uh, and Stavante uh, Rampali and Kina uh, Mukherjee, for instance, for the clear cut discussions uh, on the stem cells because uh, we are the physicist and chemist community combo. So we know, we don't know about that exact uh, about that. Mahmudi. Later, we came to know that. Uh, to, we, we are introduced to. Uh, uh, that was Stravanti Rampali and Kina Mukherjee into the middle field. And finally, without the support of DBT and DST and the Indo Swiss and the Indo Danish project, uh, we are not, uh, we won't finish the, this type of works because it is yeah, for the, we thank, we are acknowledging, we are looking for that generous funding and the NCBS core facility and the chief for that imaging facilities. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sivaraman. Now the presentation is open for questions from friends. So if there yeah. is any question, you can ask, please. Uh, Siva, yeah, can you can hear me? Hello, Siva. Yeah, tell me. Uh, yeah, tell Siva, me, tell me. Yeah, presentation is excellent. Really, you did a very good work and uh, you, your molecules are doing well. So actually, yeah. my concern is uh, you made a series of molecules but you told yeah. it is showing high fluorescence in glycerol. Yeah. Right? And yeah, glycol. Yeah, yeah. Glycol. glycol and glycerol. Yeah, it is yeah. yeah. So actually, my question is that is the collective of 
collective fluorescence or single molecule fluorescence you know actually when the polarity increasing then the molecule will aggregate in itself okay after no, 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 no. no i couldn't give that slides i would put that slides okay. you are your question is correct your question is correct it's whether it's the aggregation or it's the chimins uh, of uh, viscosity gives that fluorescence yes. i will give uh, that's the point we did that uh, aggregation used emission that is aggregation using that water as well as the in uh, in the uh, water as well as in the hydrophobic solvents hydrophobic and hydrophilic solvents that none of the molecules are that the whole molecules are inactive in the aggregation uh, aggreg aggregation used emission it won't show any aggregation induced emission states okay okay that max it nice. won't for won't for okay yeah thank you yeah finally i i miss you man that's uh, i would like to thank i would i would like to acknowledge my okay. long time long time friend chinnaya okay. sami because we started uh, me and chinnaya sami started our career uh, phd career from uh, indian institute of science in the ipc department recently he joined us in a uh, assistant professor in nit calicut uh, he's a very good uh, good friend of mine you know we are uh, that's uh, still our friendship is continuing i just missed man okay that's the question thank, thank, thank you very much appreciate it thank yeah. you yeah shiva i have some questions yeah you can yeah yeah sure 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 so whether the, uh, all your nr molecules emit only in the um, ph of greater than 7.4 no 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 for is1 for i told about that is1 now yeah for i told about is1 okay this one is the ph sensitive that none of the other molecules are ph insensitive it is a very good boon for us okay that's why we need this uh which are ha doesn't have that any ph responsive groups yeah because uh, when that's you right. are, when you are using a, a, your nr probe for mitochondrial imaging or in stem cells it need to be soluble in water yeah. as well as it should be uh, viable to ph so you you didn't discuss anything about the yeah, that's, that's why you... all of the molecules are all the for hc1 to hc6 which i used for the study okay which are all ph insensitive type of molecules that's insensitive type how about ice yeah but, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how about the ic50 about... values ic so? ic ic50 values i see five values the molecules are i will tell that uh, the molecules are even non toxic i will say that molecules will stay inside the cell for long term imaging so the molecules are least toxic there is no toxicity at all for all the molecules yeah that's nice thank you yeah that's why that's why we are we, we want to apply this one in the brain neurons and other some other stuff it's going on yeah uh, that's nice thank you for your nice and wonderful presentation shiva so yeah thank you thank you with these words i thank dr shivaraman for giving such a wonderful presentation uh, and i hope that uh, it would be very useful for some of the faculties and also students who have been working on this area thank you shivaraman Thank you. So the second talk will be by Dr. V. Dharmaraj. So Dr. Dharmaraj did his bachelor's in Periyar Evera College, Tirchi, and master's in Bardasan University, and PhD from M.K. University under the guidance of Professor. yam ke puchmani he did uh, two uh, he did his first postdoctoral fellowship from national chungcheng university taiching taiwan and currently he is doing his second postdoctoral fellowship in state key laboratory of chemical biology and sensing and chemometrics in hunan university china his area of research the research is chemobiosensor based on nanoparticle quantum dots and fluorescent probes and also surface enhanced raman spectra and time dependent functional theory and also he has published uh, five book chapters 
and more than 15 publications. Total citation about 4,400, Hatch index of 10, and total, and I kindly request Dr. Dharmaraj to present. Dr. Dharmaraj, you can kindly share your slides and start your talk. Can you hear me? Kindly share your uh, presentation, Dharmaraj. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we are hearing you. Just uh, um, on your cam and also audio and also share your presentation through sharing option. Yeah, yeah, I will share. Happy? Hello. Just share your uh, presentation, Mr. Dharmaraj. I shared it. No. No, I am not. We are not able to see your presentation. Just on the right corner, there will be a present in a present now. I know. I shared it. But I think it's not visible for us. Wait. Can you get now? No. We didn't see any uh, shared option from your system. Okay. I'll connect any. Okay. okay. Dharma, your, um, your mic is on mute. Your mic is on mute. Just unmute it. Dharma, your, um, your mic is on mute. Your mic is on mute. Just unmute it. Okay. Uh, you touch my screen? No. Okay, have some problem for Google. Sir, 
Or else, uh, there was just mail your uh, PowerPoint. I will share it in my view so that you can talk easily. No, it is uh, another way of also personal kind. Because that uh, we think is uh, some. Wait, I will check and. Uh, okay. Ah yes sir. Yeah yeah. Yeah now it's visible. Yeah now it's my screen. Yeah now it's my screen. Yeah 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 now it's visible. Okay. Wait. Are we working? Yeah now it's okay you can start Dharma. Okay. Thank you. That's the yeah, uh, kind introduction. Today I'm going to talk good evening to all. Today I'm going to talk in the book Surface Indian Stromal Spectroscopy, Principal Subject Fabrication and Applications. Singer, uh, if you are not hearing me, just let me know. Yeah, yeah, I will share. Yeah, here we uh, have some uh, internet issues. Okay, no problem, no problem. I will uh, tell you whether there is, if there is any problem, I will uh, tell you. Uh, sure, sure, thank you. Uh, this is what... <laughs> Okay. 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 I think it's clear. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. You can just uh... okay. This is the overview of in the presentation. What is the environment spectrum principle and how to prepare and kind of normal to substitute the ambient spectrum signal and how to apply for different type of sensors in the image in Okay. In 1928, Dr. Sir Raman discovered the inelastic scattering, which is called Raman effect. She got Nobel Prize in physics for this work on scattering of the light. In 1974, can only discover Yangan's Raman signal molecule at the mechanism surface. If this mechanism is attributed to a surface of molecules, what is Raman scattering? When it is the light passes through that molecule, molecule can get vibrate and scatter that light in different angle levels. In this way, in uh, it is called uh, Raman scattering. It is called error. inelastic and elastic scattering. Elastic scattering leave the elastic scattering leave the molecule in in the same energy state. It is called relay scattering. Inelastic scattering leave that molecule in different quantum state is called common scattering. The process of inelastic scattering, the energy exchange between photon and the molecule leads to inelastic scattering. Here, the quantum mechanism occurs clearly that exit is exit a photon, photon which is without any, any loss of energy. It's come back to that same level, it is called release scattering. This scattering is release scattering. When the excited state for exit photon, this last the energy into the molecule is called stroke length. When that photon excited molecule 
acetate photon gain the energy from the molecule it's called and and stoke lines and and stoke lines after it is rarely rarely after because it is quickly populated the selection rule of selection rules of ramas nagar in the molecule for us molecule for us it must be changed during the molecular vibration the वाटर Surface sentence from scattering when the molecule can absorb on the nanostructure surface, nanostructure on the top of the surface, it enhances the ram battery. One is from electromagnetic enhancement and chemical enhancement. Most of the, mostly, in, uh, mostly used in such a substrate in three kind of uh, applications. In, मेटलिकुलर Nano cell can be used in uh, a cell surface because of having uh, because of uh, those uh, shape having more active surface area and then uh, surface surface can modify with big uh, uh, kind of method. What? Can you hear me? See here. उट Because the chemical uh, etching method can be easy, uh, easy to fabricate and the cost-effective and the time-consuming, time-consuming method. It is uh, other than uh, uh, nanolithography and the photography method uh, cannot be used to etch only because it is uh, more cost, uh, more uh, more cost and time-consuming method. This larger enhancement can achieve. On 10 to 100 nanometer of spectral nanoparticles. Here, the common thing, even common scattering, is mainly mainly uh, more important for uh, applications of substrate. Just for the the surface and only uh, enhance the more enhance method of common scattering. Compared to the chemical enhancement, so uh, different kind of substrate uh, we have that we have prepared. Uh, I have given one by one. First, I have uh, colloidal colloidal substrate. Colloidal substrate can easily used in chemical detection method, preparing for uh, metal nanoparticles. Here, gold nanostar can be prepared by chemical detection method. Then the presence of uh, yeah. Methyl 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 it is uh, big uh, big 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 Okay, no problem. Just move on. Okay. Okay. 
Sometimes it will happen because that we I I have to use in VPN. Okay, okay, no problem. Package cannot access here, China. Maybe that problem is happening. Here, so that after the third floor, I need to match the need to match it. And when the first part of the third floor, I need to get the drama signal. If you get that, you can have another part of the drama. ஒருங்க <laughs> <laughs> that the person of target molecule uh, that uh, target molecule and adsorb on the uh, silver nanoparticle to it will enhance the raman signals then the raman can then think that pure target as if the layer of the minute in all uh, the raman and the enhance the raman is from uh, increasing the fluctuation of air between individual droplets due to the more uh, more sensitivity for the uh, common proteins here uh, paper based sensors this substrate is very simple and very effective method for preparation of silk uh, cell mass filter paper can the base of the substrate uh, uh, document can uh, modify the with the fiber uh, fiber paper filter paper fiber paper sorry cellular paper paper and then uh, the cold nano particle that it can get filter paper on the surface it is which is very clearly in the acm is cellulose uh, cellular layer fibers can degrade the one nano cold nano particle to this uh, this kind of substrate can be used for uh, many this this uh, the engine the sensitivity of this kind of uh, checked by methylene blue as a raman potter when by increasing of the concentration of methylene blue it will emit the transmers this is very interesting uh, very simple and very interesting substrate swap the substrate if uh, we are using that uh, usually used with the tap attached to tap tap inside the tap and that tap that cold nano particle and the inside of the tap that simple there is no need any uh, report uh, sets reporter and any binding receptor just to agree on the cold nano particle and the tap can stick that vegetable things are any surface to the pesticide pesticide uh, and then must the raman we will get a pesticide uh, pesticide that it is very simple we, this substrate can be used for uh, for different kind of uh, vegetable to uh, to measure the uh, methyl parathion yeah. Uh, here the planar substrate uh, most of the hard uh, hard base is ended the signal is uh, very high because the 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 instant light it cannot penetrate to the uh, base as all the scattered light is coming from the collectors it will end up with more intense uh, signal so we have to silica silica nano particle on the surface of silica substrate in the top of that part it is part of the class method silica nano particle on the silica substrate from that uh, electrolysis reaction from using hf and silver nitrate it is cut more uh, it's excess of hf it is exchanging that silica substrate silica silica substrate and the coagulation of silver nanoparticle also this uh, very 
very poor we got that very poor state and sickness we are over this technique uh, over this problem we are using as well as well that trade to make that essential for the various and the top of the scene so that we are Uh, using electrical polarization reaction for formation of silicon nanoparticles, uh, using such a particular method, there is uh, this still essay would lay and sacrifice that sacrifice and prevent that coagulation of uh, old silicon nanoparticle and the H uh, that despite that of the mica and also on the uniformly in the silicon nanoparticle and the substrate, we will invent more than invent. Uh, Common signal and tend to the power. They will. Uh, it is that uh, this kind of uh, solid substrate must not be used in English grammar compared to other flexible uh, solid substrate that are more than like. And this is very interesting. Uh, another substrate. Uh, Even on a particular and such a nano filler substrate, this is the three times only used in substrate in collective. The signal is very high. The synthesis of the preparation of substrate first using silica is very easy to make it and used for chemical preparation of silica nano filler. And then they create the metal nanoparticle and the filler using a scattering method and decorating and uh, decorating and part of the semi exchange uh, semi images. And that analysis is dead. This sub this kind of subject can be for analysis of the gas sample and the liquid sample. Both of the sample can gives the promise. When that using the gas sample, gas sample. Uh, Google on the top of the uh, there is no uh, in this that signal not uh, signal in this part that you could have it is very good uh, it is both on the bottom of the uh, nano filler and the silica na Now, filler can uh, it is uh, green line. It is non link uh, nano filler that that was part of the first trade.
Yeah, Dharma, you are on online. Please share your screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the screen is visible. Now you can continue your talk. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, here we have some internet issues. Okay. <laughs> then, uh, optical fiber, silver nanoparticles, oh, it is very interesting and we uh, use special technique for the applications. Let us look at this, uh, this is good for uh, analyzing the remote control, uh, remote control analysis of the test chemicals and the pesticide and pesticide and the explosive uh, material can be to optical fiber. Optical fiber can modify modified in the tip of the uh, one end to modify with one side con by using a texture. Uh, and then uh, hydrolysis consumes the hydrolysis group using the uh, sulfuric acid and the peroxides, and then modified with the functional group in the amine uh, using APP, APTMS, and then the effect with silver nanoparticle and the surface of the cone shaped uh, uh, fiber surface. This kind of uh, Oh, and used for sensing of remote key uh, in the uh, method. That when the uh, laser, uh, laser source connected with the, through the fiber to sense that uh, any, uh, anywhere in the distance to using the sample and connect the uh, signals from to the fiber. It's very useful uh, technique for several uh, things. Uh, we are still missing the that the ACM image of uh, uh, ACM image is high uh, magnified the tip of the, the fiber and the growth in uh, D is highly magnified in the surface of the tip of the uh, fiber. When that, when that, that uh, uh, sets that come up. Ram, uh, ATP, ATP is the Raman probe. A negative fiber cannot show any uh, signals, uh, any signals. It is when the presence of nanoparticle and the surface of the uh, fiber, it will enhance that Raman signal in the field. Uh, this kind of trick can uh, more ultimately be used for the chemical reactors and the many other. Uh, environment uh, and then here, uh, gold nanoparticle uh, and the silver uh, water modified black acid. This is also very interesting uh, uh, technique for fabrication of uh, It is very useful for uh, real time monitoring, flow injection method, and uh, chemical reactor, uh, real time detection of. Chemical <laughs> Uh, in a sense, with uh, multiple analysis, multiple analysis and uh, multiple uh, reuses for set separate. It is then another thing that uh, different kind of uh, analyze will show the different signals. Okay. Yeah. Sensing, uh, sensing strategy of uh, designing of uh, molecule, uh, designing of the substrate, 
first is bad deductions. There is no need any uh, any additional drama uh, reporter or uh, any other writing researchers cannot attach with the success of Raman's set of stories. Directly can be that subject to direct the family. Uh, then the indirect method, uh, indirect deduction uh, signal is from set reporters. This uh, this kind of thing. Uh, Binding receptor in the through the surface of uh, acryl nanoparticles, metal surface, the binding receptor acts as a selective uh, binding receptor receptors and also acts as a common reporter. And then, kind of signal with the use of probe, this then the absence of another way it will end up with the Raman when the, when the presence of another way it will bind. Bind with uh, it is aggregate with uh, it is come close to the uh, both nanoparticle and 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 nanoparticle Generate the image from the surface, that is nanoparticle, to uh, turn up, can turn up the Raman signals. Uh, this is the step uh, to designing a Raman surface sensing circuit. Okay. Then uh, this is the direct definition of analyte. Uh, this is very simple and uh, very easiest method to preparation of this kind of circuit. We uh, here it. Uh, you know, not a cube, definite on the, the, on the top of the uh, substrate can uh, drop that on the right directly to measure that. It is very uh, convenient and uh, useful technique. Uh, here, the Raman spectra shows the uh, glance to uh, in this content of uh, analyte to this uh, analyte of uh, melanin. Uh, is uh, 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 this is uh, kind of uh, 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 and then, uh, and then, reporter and modified with functionalized with surface of nanoparticles and then functionalized in the binding is of uh, antigen uh, antibody and functionalized with the surface of the nanoparticles and then the, when the present uh, uh, the the uh, can Give that signals. This is uh, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, Raman spectrum is not uh, good for this direct samples. It is good for metal samples. Is uh, the way sense that molecule. This is just uh, one kind of. Uh, uh, sensing, uh, but it is not good for uh, sensing approach. Uh, and then uh, turn on the sensor. Here is very simple again, okay? very simple. Uh, metal nanoparticles uh, can functionalize with the uh, binding insert of uh, dipolyphonic acid and the underwater in CPG absorb at the surface will enhance the drama signals. Then the presence of arsenic. To get the aggregate and the signals, because that is what And then finally, you cannot interest by another part, and a molecular molecular weaker using the molecular the target 
Thank you for your nice presentation, Mr. and Dr. Dharmaraj. Now, the, um, if there is any queries, you can kindly ask. So, Dharmaraj, what is the advantage of using uh, itching methodology rather than other methodology? Is there is methodology better or else any other method is better? Yeah. Uh, the solid base of the system can uh, use the is better. It is uh, other than uh, flexible and uh, strong substrate, and it's not possible to use that method. It's open for the solid I can uh, show that uh, here, uh, it is everything is here, everything is solid substrate. And subject magnet image it is not like other subject. And subject is 
very good the method you can teach yeah definitely we have that standard uh, we have that we have to send the measurement of the gram uh, analytical concentration it's is possible thank you dr Dar- thank you dr dharmaraj and from this um, and from this we conclude the, the session and the feedback link will be sent to the participants through uh, sms within 10 to 15 minutes and you can submit your presentation until 1 hour and tomorrow session start exactly at 10 o'clock thank you everyone thank you